think of it as the rough draft of the podcast world. This is the Newbie Writers Podcast with your hosts, Damian Vogt and Catherine Bramcamp. Hey, this is episode 120 of the Newbie Writers Podcast. And I was going to get someone else to do the intro, but I completely forgot. Because we don't have Catherine today. We have Dion Lister on to take her place. Good Hello. morning. Hello. Oh, that was very posh. Hello. Hello. Hello, everybody. We have a very special guest, someone that we end up having Twitter wars with a fair bit, and that's author Melissa Craig. Welcome to the show. It's been a long time. We should have had you on ages ago. Yeah, I have something to say about oh, that. Go Gosh. for it. <laughs> no, thanks. No, it's great to be here, finally. Look, finally. We, no. we had Charity Parkinson on before you. That's disgusting. That shouldn't happen. Oh, no. Oh, gosh. No. No, she deserves it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, thank you all. Um, now. Oh, I can do Charity's voice. Yeah. Hi, y'all. <laughs> it's going to be that level, I think. Oh, gosh. Oh, no, okay, gosh. look. <laughs> Are we actually talking writers? about writing? <laughs> yeah, we will. Writers, is this serious? Is this no. serious? We can't be silly, okay? <laughs> Got to be serious. No silliness. <laughs> you can be as serious as you like. It's going to be a very short interview. <laughs> Have you written a book? Uh, yes. Cool. Thanks for being on. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Now. <laughs> oh, dear, we're turning into... Uh, Another podcast. Yep. One that anyway. we won't speak of. This could be Newbie yeah. Nation, if you like. <laughs> Newbie Nation. <laughs> uh, oh. Anyway, so Melissa writes erotic short stories and novels. Don't you, Melissa? I do, I do. When I have time. No. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> Melissa, yeah, just, just for those who are listening, because a lot of new writers are listening to this, and Melissa self-publishes, but she's very good with promotion, and she's even been on Sydney Radio a couple of times, um, and she really knows what she's doing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, especially with erotica, it's all about writing emotions, so um, trying to dive into that emotion, I think, is hard for some writers, but then um, I'm just, yeah, luckily. Well, how, <laughs> how did you get into doing erotic writing. I mean, I'm not a fan of all that romancy stuff, but how do you get go from having a day job to then going home and going, yeah, I'm going to write a bit of filth now? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, actually, it, well, I suppose it did sort of happen like that. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, um, it just sort of happened one day. I thought when I first started writing it was going to be a romance but mm -hmm. with every edit that I went through, um, I just started saying, uh, you know, words that aren't romantic. And um, it was a mentor that said, ah, oh, sweetie, uh, I think you've got erotica here. <laughs> and I went, oh, really? And I cried for two weeks. But um, because I'd never read an erotica. So I was like, where the hell did this come from? But as any writer, like, where do your stories come from? It just comes from within and then you just write it down. So it did... Um, yeah, you just start writing it, and with every edit, it gets a bit more hotter. See, this is the thing. I'll, I don't know. How do you get into that when it comes to liking erotica? Like, do you, do you finish school, and you're, you're in a bookstore, and you go, ooh, I think I might read this book with two people plastering each other on the cover, covered in raindrops and rose petals. <laughs> And chops and, and kittens. Yeah, yeah. Isn't there a song about that? Is there? I don't know. Yeah, the sound of music. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the sound of music and erotica probably doesn't go hand in hand. <gasps> Melissa, uh. that's an original idea. No, it's yeah. not. I'm sure that's on the internet it's in an video original form. Idea. It's on the internet. Mm. You can change oh, the characters, but anyway. <laughs> it won't be called the sound of music, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> mm, the sound of something else, but anyway. Yes, so Melissa, you are working on a book at the moment? Yeah, I've got my next one. It's been on the cards for a little while as um, I don't write like a lot of other authors. I just start writing when the, the story comes to me and then if it stops, all of a sudden I'll put it down. So this one's been going on for about two years now mm. and it's called The Unblemished Librarian. Um, and, and I hear you've got a really, really good editor. <laughs> 
I have a brilliant editor, and I was going through my edits last night, giggling to myself. Um, yes, this editor is called Dion Lister. <laughs> yeah, don't yeah. use her. <laughs> no, no, she's awesome. She's I am. Great. She I'm is awesome. really good, and she even like gives little quotes, like dictionary, and tags it into a dictionary. <laughs> Yeah, oh. I say, yeah, this word is spelled like this as per the Oxford Dictionary <laughs> or the Merriam-Webster Dictionary if you're going for the American version. Yeah, so it's hard, you know, and that's, and that's good because, you know, so many times it slip up with the American version of spelling and, and the Australian that sometimes you don't even realise and, and an editor picks all that up. But, um, yeah, so unble um, unblemished librarian. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You picked a hard name for your book. Yeah. I had to say that because Dion always gives me shit about that. I could have just called it the unblemished chick. <laughs> yeah, probably. No, if you, do it, if you use school speak, because I'm in a lot of schools, you could be the unblemished SSO. Oh, <laughs> SSO. SSO. Mm -hmm. Student okay. support officer, I think they call them now. Okay. Anyway. But, oh, but her librarian works in a, in a sure. public library. Yeah. <laughs> library, in a library. Library. Yeah, I'm so, actually enjoying this story too. Oh, I have good. to say, like it's not just. Does your husband when, know this? No. <laughs> when when Melissa writes her erotic stories, it's not just about the sex. There's actually story to it, emotion to it, backstory for the characters. It's a proper book. It's not just sex erotic. scenes one after the other. No, and and that's the difference between erotica and erotic. Um, you know, it's it's an erotic romance, which means there is backstory and it's not just full on erotica. Erotic mm. I should say. So um and and, and a lot of people don't realise that that's the difference between erotica and erotic. You know, erotic is more for females and, and so that they have that little bit of romance and um and building new characters and and <clears throat> So let me guess, you you were sitting in a library and you're like, Oh, he's pretty cute. I wonder <laughs> if I was a librarian. Is that how it starts? And you start madly writing down, and he comes over and he says, "You're looking a bit hot and flustered there." And you're like, "Yes, walk away. I'm, I'm writing my next book." <laughs> no, no, oh. I don't go sit in a library and then write. <laughs> um, no, it just sort of, as like any other story with any other writer, it just sort of happens. It just comes to you. It could be something that could, um, you could see somebody or you can see someone's colour hair because this lady's got red hair and, and that's what actually triggered it off. I saw this gorgeous lady once with red hair and it just went bang. It just all sort of triggered it all off. Mm -hmm. And um, and I don't know how she became a librarian. I just, um, yeah, went with the flow. It's not very. The title's not very Australian. Then it should be more like the Ranger Diaries. <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> oh dear! A lot of people don't realise our slang. <laughs> no, but and we're going to be doing a show about that soon. We've organised oh, it. I have to say, this is a show full of Australians. It today. is. It is. It's all these Americans going. I'm lost now. Yeah. But Can someone translate, please? I don't understand them. Can they slow down? Well, there was yep. a thing on the radio, actually, I was listening to, where they were talking about how Australians are now the only English-speaking sort of place that uses the most amount of diminutives, so for everything, and, you know, we shorten everything or we put O mm. on the end of things or we change names to have an A at the end, so Dazza, Shazza, that sort of Dazza. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But then we seem to have bastardised that sort of form so much that the diminutive itself can sometimes become longer than the name. So Tom becomes Tomo. Yes. And it was quite fascinating. So we're going to do a show on that coming up soon. I yeah, think. a lot of people that have a lot of trouble understanding, <laughs> like yeah. trying to figure out, like, yeah, that means one thing, but then it also means another thing. Well, and yeah. we found that when we were over in America too, like, you know, the route that you, you it's route that you take on mm. the Yeah, on we, the say road. Route. we say we say take route. This route and they like what? What? <laughs> <laughs> it's like route sixty six, no <laughs> route yeah. sixty nine. Yeah. No, um it's like um, route. Route. That, yes. Yeah. But then route means so many other things like route and route. Yeah, anyway. Well apparently <laughs> as well I, I don't know why where this comes from, but people have been shortening the word mobile to mobs. I'm just gonna oh, get on oh, mobs. I 
sound like I a know retard. Totes. Yeah. Totes McGoats. Totes McGoats. <laughs> Can that be the show title? Totes McGoats with Totes Melissa Craig. Oh my gosh, what does it even mean? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I use totes occasionally just to annoy the boy. So when he he comes in whinging, I go, "That's totes, bro." Just oh, to no. He looks at me like you're a weirdo. Yeah, Damien's too... just trying to be fifteen again. I know yeah. it's awesome, isn't it? <clears throat> Don't talk to me like that. <laughs> Speak to the hand. Speak to the talk to the hand, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my kids aren't, thank goodness, my kids aren't old enough to speak like that yet. They haven't <laughs> picked up on the silly lingo. Oh, I'm sure it'll be something else that we don't understand. <laughs> well, he came in the other day, I don't know, he was watching something on TV, and he says, it was so awesome, and then just walked away. <laughs> and I've gone, ah, ah, come back here, what? He goes, it was awesome, Dad, it was just totally awesome, and then walked off again. Great. <laughs> <laughs> At least he didn't say like like dad. It was like totally awesome. Oh. Like, like you know what I mean. <laughs> slap him with a ruler every time he'd say that. So, how do you come up with titles? Hey, I've got a question. How how do you come up with titles for these books? I mean, you've got plentiful package. <laughs> Ample attraction. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Well, I know with that series, with the simply breathtaking series, I want to. I don't know why. I just liked Plentiful Package because Plentiful and it's a package and it just sort of went hand in hand. Oh, oh. That sounds very pun. Yeah. Intended in that. Um, <clears throat> Did it come um, from the book? Did you say, oh, you had your character gripping the other character going, oh, you've got a Plentiful Package? Well, I did actually write it, Plentiful Package in it. And I do do that with that series. I do write... Um, I try to write like ample attraction in the it, within the story somewhere, and then my next one is Majestic Males, the third book of that series. So <laughs> I'm trying to stick to the you know uh, PP. It's it's I don't know. I just yeah. I don't know why I'm doing it with that series, but I just am. I I don't know. But you know what else fits with that is that in Melissa's books, she actually likes to write words that all have the same first letter, and she does that as a joke. A bit yeah. like it's kind of funny, so yeah. she'll have three p words next to each other. Yeah, they're like, usually adjectives. Yeah, and I, I, I don't I don't know why, but I just seem to write that way, and and I think it just seemed very fitting for for that that storyline, that um set of stories, a simply breathtaking series to be that way. I don't know. I just um I found it funny. I like to do a bit of humour in between the erotica because you, you know there's <clears throat> trying to break it down so it's not so well, sex is funny anyway. It is, it is, and and it should be funny. And I and I love it when people go. I hope you don't mind, but I, I laugh my ass off through your story, and I'm like, that's awesome. That's but it's all funny. Yeah, it is yeah. funny. I laugh too when I'm reading it. Yeah, <laughs> editing it. <laughs> I love it when you go. Did you write this in for me? No. Yeah. <laughs> you did. You wrote one bit that was. Yeah, just I for did. Me. I did. I wrote that bit in there for you. Was uh, it about the <laughs> hatred of toes? No. Oh. <laughs> oh man, I so have to do that. Yeah. Someone has. Suck some toes or something. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. She'll hate that bit. <laughs> Bomb it. I'll edit that out. <laughs> Could be called That's the totes toes. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, gosh. But, um, you yeah, know, I just seem to write it that way. But with the other, I don't know, it just, um, it's not the first thing that I do. I don't write the title straight away. Hmm. It just sort of comes to me. It, sometimes it takes a while. Um, <clears throat> so then. I, I'll change it and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, that's it. I never choose my book titles till I finish the book. Yeah. Yeah. Well, That's too hard. How, anyway. how did family react, especially with the first one? You say to your mother, oh, I had a book published. So like, what's it about? <laughs> yeah. It's about a penis. I'm probably not using my mum's a good idea because she loves them. So, oh. um, <laughs> yeah, um, it was a bit of a shock, I think, especially because everyone's like, oh, my gosh, Melissa, mm. what? <laughs> um what have you done? The shame you've brought on our family. Um, <laughs> oh, that's and, terrible. And, but it's more like, well, you know what? Everyone does it, and why not write about it? And if I'm helping inspire someone's relationship in between, you know, a couple mm. by reading mm. a book, why not? So, um, and 
and all about reading is literally you just want to dive into a world and forget about your own. And I love books, and if I can do that with somebody else, that's the main thing. And um, and just because I write it doesn't mean that I'm, you know, this is, you know, it is fiction. Mm. <laughs> that's what I'm yeah, writing. Ma Melissa doesn't necessarily live every bedroom scene she's ever written. <laughs> You'd be tired. I... <laughs> and sore. Yeah. <laughs> there's plenty of full packages. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's there's a question then to feed off of that. Do you, you obviously have followers and, and people that love your books. Do you get a few of those people through social media thinking that you are living that life because you're writing about it? Oh, yeah, yeah. And does that get creepy? <clears throat> um, not... Well, through social media and Twitter and stuff like that, yeah, you do have to watch out and I have calmed down a lot now. I sort of am not so naive anymore. Um, you know, I used to put a lot of quotes and things like that from my books and, and everyone used to think it was me saying that, but it was quotes from my books. So, um, so um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know. Oh, but okay. it is hilarious when we were in uh, America and we were at a restaurant. Um, <laughs> a young waiter, as soon as he found out Melissa was an erotica author, he went all embarrassed and then decided to start asking her all about it. He was very interested. Really? <laughs> it was funny. It's funny yeah. to watch. <laughs> yeah. Dion's there a lot when things like that. She goes, I don't know how the hell you do it, but, you know. <clears throat> do you play on it, though? Do you sort of try and play up to him a bit? You can see he's uncomfortable, but kind of he's done, he's a he's a horny man thinking, oh, she writes about <laughs> sex, might be able to score a bit here. Do you then play on that a bit, or just go rack off, mate? I'm just an author. Yeah, no, I don't play on it. I just literally, it's like I'm just an author like anyone else, and you know, we all struggle to what we write, and half the time I don't even remember what I've written after I've written it. So, um. <clears throat> you know, someone could be talking to me about some sort of character and I have absolutely no idea because you've got so many stories on your mind and you're thinking about the next story or that, you know, I've got like three books going on in my head at the moment and I have no idea what I've already written because, you know, once you... Well, I don't know about other authors, but once I write a book and I've published the book, mm. it's sort of... It's, Time to move on. It moves on and I forget what I've written. So a lot of people might know what I've written and they've read it over and over and over again and mm. so they know a lot about it and when they come and say something to me, I'm like, what? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's embarrassing when you don't know your own book. <laughs> yeah, you're being interviewed on radio and then you're like, what? And then I have to say, yeah. That's your book, Melissa. <laughs> oh, yeah, what, right. What's the name again. Yeah. That's true. I had a, I had my first radio interview the other day and before the interview I just went over all the characters' names to make sure I didn't forget because <laughs> I thought true. what if they ask me about something and I don't know what they're talking about. Exactly yeah. and you have to because you do forget and um, yeah. Well, with but the, it is funny. With the radio <laughs> thing because Dion you've just been on radio as well, yeah. how did you go they get very sensitive about using the word vagina and penis. How can you, how do you do that on public radio? You, you're told literally this is a family show, so you have to tone it down. My my thing is I probably giggle to cover it up so I can think for a second mm. <laughs> what else to say. So, um, and, and they do try and get something out of you that way. Um, but uh, yeah, well, I mean Dion's book. It's called yes. a badge adventure. Like, you yeah. can't no, avoid adventure. it. No, well, they had to play that interview at 6 o'clock in, in the morning. Because you yeah. can't say badge on the radio after 6.30 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can say it any time on the Newbie Writers podcast. Yeah, well, I, and I said, instead of saying penis, I said peen. <laughs> oh, did you? Peen. Oh, oh, oh sure, weird saying penis, but even saying peen is awkward. <laughs> Especially uh, if it's yeah. an EP. It's not a, an erotica. It's a humorous story with talking genitals. I think we've spoken about it on here before, <laughs> yeah. maybe. But yeah, so I was saying vag and peen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I just try and avoid all those whenever something like that. I just, you know, I'll say member or um, <clears throat> some other words instead of those words. I mean, but I noticed with your interview on 2GB Radio that you, it was more talking around it and innuendo rather yeah. than the words. And that's what a lot of it is, is more of, and that's what a erotica is, innuendo. And um, and that's what a lot of the interviews have been like too, like on, 
in the, even in the one in the UK, and and I've had some in two triple R. Like there's been a few radio stations proving on and um, triple M and all that. Yeah, it's just all literally it's yeah innuendo, and that's the best way that you can do it with radio. Do they give Not you some heads up though of the question? Do they give you some sort of indication of the questions they might ask? No, <laughs> no, and that's the worst bit, and that's why they don't tell you because they want to hear what your answers are. So, um, yeah, but that's not fair. You can't sit in a, you know, like the producer talking to you just before you go on, saying, "Look, family show can't be used in these following terms," and then they say to you, "So, plentiful package. What's that about?" And you go, "It's about a massive member." <laughs> I, no, I literally say, well, it's plentiful and it's a package. And that's <laughs> that's how I would that's how I said it. Mm. And and you don't need to say any more because that's innuendo. So And because <clears throat> Melissa's books have stories, she can also talk about the story. Yeah, I talk about the kite surfing and, and, and things like that that inspire the situation, you know, the surroundings, the reef and, and all that sort of stuff. So <clears throat> yeah, you can write about other things, not just the sex or talk about it. Yeah, but that's let's be honest. That's why they're reading the book, though. They they want to have a little bit of fluff and then get into the. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, people want to feel like they're in a holiday. They're having a holiday in Australia. Well, oh, holidays. Um, how do you keep it from that fine line between being corny, as well, and just? <laughs> I mean, you know. I don't know. Um, that's probably a good question for my editor. <laughs> Dion, do you have to edit out the corny bits where they gaze longingly into each other's no, eyes and go, um, I love Melissa, you? That's Melissa not... doesn't do that. No, no, no. no. Yeah. Melissa's just, I think either you naturally you can write and not put that stuff in and she just doesn't put that stuff in. Yeah. I don't know. And, and like I've had no formal training with writing or anything, so I have absolutely no idea about that sort of thing like... Um, I've read a lot of romance books over my life and um, I don't know, I always I wanted to write something that weren't in romance books. So I think that's probably what I'm doing. Mm. Things that I always wanted, I wish they'd put more of or not that happily ever after, you know. he's, he's And that's my thing, I suppose, as well. That's why I went self-published is because... I did submit and, you know, they wanted the happily ever after. They wanted him to be rich. They didn't want him to have this and that and that. And I just wasn't willing to change my character. And and I went, no, I'm sick of reading that in romance books. Well, there and is a kind of happily ever after. Well, there is. <laughs> yeah, but not as in the traditional, he's a typical rich guy. He's got everything, you know, that sort of thing. No, he's an everyday bloke, mm. you know, and, and, I'll, and that's what Australians are and that's what I wanted to portray. Um, so how come then you've got like a really buffed guy on the cover? If it's going to be portraying Australia, <laughs> shouldn't it be a trucky well, shirt and shorts? Well, this is in my imagination. Oh. He's buff, but he's a kite surfer, so... The buff yeah. guy on the cover is an Australian. He is! He's a very rare <laughs> Australian. Oh, maybe where you hang out. Yeah. <laughs> You're hanging You're not, out in the wrong places. Yeah, not in far north Queensland, so, you know. <laughs> oh, well, maybe I need to move. <laughs> Keg. <laughs> You know, is uh, <clears throat> but you know he's young and he's fit and he's kite surfs and so that's why. Well, being self-published, and how did you find that uh, someone to do the cover? Um, I did the covers myself, mm. and um, it took for ample attraction. It took me six months to find the right photo, and I was very, very picky and. I wasn't putting that book out until I found the photo I wanted for the cover because I wanted to match the book because I, I always, always hated when I picked up a book in a bookstore Ooh. that the cover didn't have anything to do with the characters in the book, had the different colour hair or the wrong, you know. Um, I loved picking up a book when the cover actually matched within the story somewhere because then people pick it up and go, oh, I wonder what part of the story that's in. Um, yeah. And so, and, and you know, I, I know it's something simple, but that's what I always wanted. So, ample attraction did take forever, and every book cover is something out of the book. Well, how so. did you find those pictures, though? I mean, that can't be a hard job, can it? You're sitting there on the internet scrolling through pictures oh of half-naked men. I know. I went through like over ten thousand erotic 
pictures and it was my eyes were hanging out of my head. I was like, I don't want to see any porno shots ever again. So um, <laughs> I was like, really? I don't want to see any more. But how did um, you sit? Did you sit down with a coffee and go, right, today I need to find the cover, right? Yes. And, and it wasn't just a day. It was weeks mm. and weeks and weeks. And yeah, that's exactly what I did. I just went, okay, no, I need to, need to seriously find this cover. And, yeah, so I'd go through all websites that you can buy photos from and stuff like that. And it was coming to the stage that I was going to get models and, and get it all organised, but I just couldn't find the right woman that I wanted with the big breasts. So she just every woman that I knew that just didn't have the right body shape or the right... It just wasn't right. So, um, Well, I'm sure there's a lot of men that would be happy to help you with that, trying to find <laughs> the right... Oh, we're doing the shape test today. You can stand in, like, the main mall. Go, look, we're looking for a cover art, <laughs> a cover yeah, model. I knew what I wanted. <laughs> mm. I was very picky with my women. Um, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> Actually, I've seen that. We were in a, um, you get the like, bras and things or whatever. They bought the wife a, she wanted a gift voucher. And I'm standing in there waiting while she's doing her stuff. Because that's, being in those places doesn't bother me. It's just cloth as much as it's only a little bit of it. And this guy came in and she's, he was looking really uncomfortable in this lingerie underwear store. And the woman, the girl behind the counter said, can I help you? He goes, yes. Um, I want to buy something for my girlfriend. She's, well, and he put his hands up just in front of the, the girl working oh, there. Oh, no. She's a bit bigger than you, about sort of this much, and did the hand <laughs> movements. <laughs> oh, no. And she sort of looked at him like, oh, okay, so that's about a B or well, C, they must whatever. Get that all the time. Yeah, you can tell she gets all the time thinking, fire out, mate. You just walked in here and nearly groped a store <laughs> attendant. <laughs> oh. Comes with a job. <laughs> you know, you talk about getting inspiration from things. You should hang out in there for a bit and just watch all these very oh. nervous men. Yeah, uh, no, it, it's, I love watching people, it's great. Yeah, well that that sounds that a sounds little bit really creepy. Bad. <laughs> I watched them from I my mean, van with one window. <laughs> no, I mean, I love sitting down in a in a coffee shop or whatever, and just watching people, you hmm. know, and, and their interactions with one another. And I love making stories up. I don't know if you guys do it. Yeah. Like you can see people talking and that, and you're trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah, well, that's cool. A mate and I used to do that. I used to be out. Yeah, it'd be you know a cafe somewhere, and you'd be watching a couple across the road, and we would then take on each of their roles and pretend we're having an argument or doing something like that. And you could the hand movements, it's it is a good way to sort of look into people without sort of being openly creepy and just staring at them. Yeah, well, and, and it's good for, um, like, when you're writing so many emotions and that, because, I don't know, I've, I seem to be tuned in to, you, you see the little things that they do, and, and that's something mm. you can write about. Um, if they were cranky or whatever, and you see how their body reacts to things. So, so I know if I, my body goes through, um, if I do something or, or um, you know, you're in a car and you nearly hit somebody, all those emotions that you feel, mm. you can write about if something happens in a story. So... Um, oh, yeah, when in my story when they almost had a car accident because someone pulled it out in front of them or whatever, my character just swore out the window and beat the horn. <laughs> Whereas I'd probably go into a bit more about, you know, the flush that goes throughout the body and the, the sweating and the, you know, there's two different types of stories, you know, genres, I should say. Well, how do you go about, you know, describing sort of body parts and that sort of thing without it becoming either smutty or reusing a word too much? Oh, that That's the hardest thing. And she Dion makes was, words up. I do. And a lot of people laugh their ass off at this, a lot of the words that I make up. <laughs> um, and funny. you have to. Yep, sorry. No, I said it's funny. It is funny, and you have to make it funny because it, otherwise there's only so many times you can write the word pussy or, you mm. know. That you use cooch sometimes. <laughs> I use cooch <laughs> and coochie and badge and, you know, muffin and smoo and, you smoo. know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd love to be your internet provider. <laughs> But um, you should you should work with my contractor. He comes up with some amazing words. He's a filthy man. Uh, makes me <laughs> makes me laugh most days. There was a write them down. Write them down. Well, yep. I, I can if you like. Yeah, email them. To me. 
<laughs> yes, yes. I'm always looking for new words. Yesterday there was a we were working in a um you know like a real estate agent and they got it's all glass and we we're at a um and they put the pictures up of new properties that sort of thing, mm. and so it's like being in a fishbowl. We're in a shopping centre, taking some gear out of there, and this girl walked past the window in exercise gear, and my contractor stopped what he's doing and followed her as she's walked past the window, <gasps> and I'm like, hey, what are you doing? He says, look at those jugglers. Oh. And I've gone, <laughs> jugglers. Let's think <laughs> about that. My brain started thinking, well, like a circus clown juggling. Yeah, I was just thinking, do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, don't make me laugh. <laughs> That's a personal joke, that one. Yep. <laughs> so that's why, yeah, I was just thinking, how do you come up with those names? I mean, he seems to pull out all these bizarre sort of terms for things no, when I he sees them. I do have to research. <clears throat> you do I have to say, imagine him in bed. Like, he could write a character like that and he would just use the most weird words and that would just be a real turn-off. <laughs> oh, I like your jugglers. Yeah. Hey, baby. Have you heard that before? Show me your jugglers. <laughs> Oh, hang on, they're just in this room. <laughs> Comes back with two milk jugs, boom, 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 dressed as a Swede. Oh, God. <laughs> with blonde plaits. <laughs> hey, nothing's wrong with the blonde plaits. <laughs> no. Fuck <Far out>. mm. <laughs> No, I do have to research a lot, and I do spend a lot of time on Google searching for new words. Um, and lots of magazine articles and a lot of sex life books and, and things like that. So I um, yeah, I do do a lot of research to find different words because I get so sick of mundane, everyday mm. words. So here's the throwback. Did you ever get turkey slap into a book, a proper book? Not the competition. <clears throat> no, I haven't finished it, but I did end up putting it into the Naughty and Nice Omnibus mm. that I did a collection of short stories for for the Breast Cancer Foundation that I um, I was sponsoring. I did a, So I did put it into that. Um, awesome. I haven't finished it, no. If and, anyone's curious about what a turkey slap is, go Google it. I'm not going to explain it. Um, yes, thanks for that. That was all your inspiration. <laughs> how, how does the Breast Cancer Society feel about, you know, getting money from an erotic book? Well, no, it was more the um, fact that it was a it was a charity event and there was uh, lots of women that were going to this charity event mm -hmm. and it was something that, so I did it into a book, so I, that's how I was sponsoring. I was sponsoring for the fact that it was a book for the packs that whoever, the women that came to the event, you know how you get freebies? Yes. So it was in one of the packs of all, you know, there was makeup, there was books, there was all sorts of things that were donated. and um, Was it a plentiful package that you gave out? No, it was, a, <laughs> <laughs> it was a whole new book and it was a pink edition and it was called The Naughty and Nice Omnibus. So it was for women and, and that's what the whole event was for women and it was for Breast Cancer Foundation. So, um, yeah, it was... And, you know, just because you have breast cancer and stuff like that doesn't mean that you shouldn't have to dive into a world of... of um, well, it doesn't stop you being a sexual person. Yeah, just because hmm. you, you have breast cancer or you might lose your breasts or, or anything like that doesn't mean anything. So, you know, you're still the same person throughout. You've just got a few things missing and, and why not rejoice in, in a bit of erotica? So... <clears throat> Do you read... Um, do you read the reviews that you get on Amazon? Because they're yeah. equally just as funny. I, I try not to now. I, know, um, I did it first, but I... And, and, and I love some of them. I have read and they are funny. Mm. And I just don't have time anymore to read read them. You know, sometimes if, I'm, if I want a bit of a laugh, but then sometimes you lean and go... <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, okay, well, it's not for everybody. And that's all I think. I think, you know, reviews are great for the readers and it gives different viewpoints from everyone. And not everyone likes erotica and not everyone's going to like my books. And I understand that because I don't like all movies that I see. So, um, and everyone's, you know, they're able to have their own view of, of what they believe. And, mm. and my words are, um, you know, there is a warning with them. I do not hide behind the romance side of it. It is erotica. So even though it's not a full-on erotic scene, because like Dion said, it has stories 
you know, characters are built up and, and everything like that. Mm. Um, it's well, not going to... I'm, I'm at Amazon now. And oh, here you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some of them are pretty funny. But it's also got, you know, you have the recommendations or the people who have bought this have also bought the other thing. Mm -hmm. Someone's written a book, Alexia Haynes, and she's got a series called Too Fast. To me, that would be a very poor choice for a, a title, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think so yeah. too. It's like, oh, oh, it's over. Okay. Oh. oh. <laughs> oh, I, I don't want someone that goes really like quickly. You know? <laughs> yeah. The thirty, the, the thirty second erotic story. Yeah. Ah, there anyway, you go. Isn't the whole point is to build it up and yeah, make it you know, last. Make it last, not to go wham bam. That's what it should be. Wham bam. Thank you, well, man. Could be the story of a man losing his, or a boy losing his virginity. <laughs> 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 oh, <it's, laughs> Erotica is all about that? the moment and extending that moment and making sure that it's, it lasts as long as it can. <laughs> Have you, extending, that's a good choice of words. Extending? <laughs> Using tablets or emails that you get in the spam yeah, folder. Innuendo. That's yep, where see? it's at. <laughs> that's all you need. And uh, that's what writing's about. Innuendo. Mm. So when do you think your next book will be out? Oh, it's supposed to be out before I go to the Gold Coast for a book signing. <clears throat> Which is so, on the 21st of March? Yeah. Oh, so, it's the 22nd, sorry, Friday it starts. Yes, so the 22nd of March is supposed to be out before then, so I have to get my butt into gear mm. and um, I have to get some more back to my editor. Yeah. <laughs> like she cares. <laughs> Yeah, and I've been quite busy lately, but um, I'll make time for that one. Yay! <laughs> so, yeah, hopefully it will be out before then, and I really, 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 at least the paperback will be will have to be by then so I can sell it at the book signing. Mm. So, so you've Gold got Coast, the cover picked out, haven't you? Yeah, but you know what? I'm actually going to change it. I um, I found a better picture, and okay. I'm going to go something totally different this time. I'm going to go a colour. <gasps> oh, Ooh. Melissa's books are normally black and white or grey. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, I stick to it. Yeah, I stick to normally a so that, so that people know that that's my book. Mm. And um, I don't know. I'm going to try something different because this is a single title book and it's an actual uh. novel. I'm going to try something different. If it doesn't work, I can swap it back, I suppose. But um, hmm, I found a photo that suits perfectly. <laughs> Is there any sort of scenes or anything that you find that are to, too taboo to put in there? Like, do you avoid certain things and do you try and keep it fairly straightforward? I did in Plentiful Package, and I, I can, when I read it, I can tell that I held back. Hmm. Um, in Ample Attraction, I went a bit more. I went, oh, who cares? So I'm going to write that. And, and every time I probably will write a bit more. And this one, even Dion's going to go, oh, my God, you didn't write that. So... Um, <laughs> Oh no! Please. Yeah, oh, no. <laughs> she she is so gonna say that, and I know, and I know everyone that's gonna read it is gonna go, oh my god, Melissa, what the? So, um, but you know, you gotta challenge yourself every time when you're writing yeah. erotica. You gotta try something different. You can't keep writing the same thing. It's like you know, it shouldn't always be the same in the bedroom, and neither should it be in a book. So, no. <clears throat> but then, did you find yourself because you were obviously clearly surfing a lot on the internet? <laughs> at things you shouldn't look at, going, wow, they no. can't be doing that. No, I don't do that. I don't watch porn if that's what you're asking. <laughs> um, no, it just sort of comes into my mind and, um, you know, you can, I look, you know, I won't lie, I, I will look on sex shops and new toys and things like that, so that, that can help inspire a scene. Oh, you must so, be the weirdest customer then. I know, I know those places get some real strange ones, but you'd go in there and you'd be holding these toys and you'd be like, I'm just doing research for another book. <laughs> and the guy's like, yeah, whatever, dude. You know. <laughs> oh, it's, everything's online these days. It's okay. Everything's online. So um, <clears throat> I don't have to go in and see anybody. Oh, do you send yeah. them occasional question emails? Like, I'm just looking at this product here. I'm researching for a book. Um, the dimensions of that aren't physically possible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. To which they'll send back, oh, yes, it is. We tried it. <laughs> Give it a go. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you're, go. you're talking about dimensions and things. I found out something quite shocking from charity because mm. um, I had to ask what something was. I don't know why I had to ask. 
I don't know where I saw the the term, but um, and then I realised when she explained to me that there's some really weird shit that goes. Oh, <laughs> can I say that on this show? Yeah, I just, oh, roo just I roost around anything that oh, begins with F. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. There's no F. Okay, yeah, there's some really weird stuff, and people do things to stretch things. There's special things just to stretch stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, it doesn't matter how big it is, Damien, I'm sure they'll make it fit. I don't <laughs> want to comprehend that. I'll just have breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> it's just sad. It is sad. It makes you wonder, though, uh, do people get so used to the way they do things that they and they try to do something different that after a while you end up so far away from where you began. You know? Like sex can be fairly boring and you think, oh, we'll try something new, we'll try something new. And next thing you know, there's... You've overdone it. You've, yeah, you've gone way too far and you're one of those weirdos on the internet that <laughs> can fit two hands up there. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, man. Although, having said that, I have a friend that works in emergency at a hospital. Yeah, and they see lots. Oh, some of the stuff they see and they laugh their heads off because some, like, there might be something that's disappeared up somewhere. And uh, the guy says, oh, I was trying to break into the house because I lost my keys and I fell on it. <laughs> so you're trying to break into your house without clothes on. Is that correct? <laughs> You'd have to be so professional, wouldn't you, just level-headed. Yeah. Just say, filling out the form. <coughs> Go, okay, so describe to me again yeah. how that champagne bottle ended up in that area Eric. upside yeah. down. You know. But apparently the um, that area of your body is automatic. And if anything is gets put there, unless it's attached to a cord or something, it actually gets sucked up. <laughs> so it gets lost and they have to do x-rays and look for batteries. It's like a Venus flytrap. <laughs> So, yeah, it's dangerous. Yes, it's dangerous. So Sex is do dangerous. It. Don't do it, kids. Yeah. <laughs> kids, oh, my God, what? Don't. No, no. 18 plus only, please. Oh, actually, I was going to say, um, Melissa, you know, if you have um, children that you know or young mm -hmm. students, at what age would you say it's appropriate to start reading your books? 18 plus. That's what I've written on my books. <laughs> 18 plus. Um, yeah, no, I... Yeah. But you can't Definitely. stop that, though. I mean, you, through Amazon, well, anyone... Amazon, like a, you can because, you know, you can't sign up to Amazon unless you put your birth date in, so... Um, like you can't lie about it. Yeah, so you can't get those books unless you do that, unless you're, you know... No, but you can lie. That was that was sarcasm. Oh, was it? Yeah, that's sorry. right. I mean, what's to stop a 16-year-old saying... Oh, oh, sorry. Well, I never lied, so I, I'm a good Oh, girl. bullshit. <laughs> I never lied. I never <laughs> went clubbing until I was 18. I'm a good girl. <clears throat> And then, yeah, clear the throat. Then after 18, <laughs> filth factor goes through the roof. That's why we end up with all these books. <laughs> no. Yes. So. I ask, what's the best thing ever, anyone's ever said about you after reading one of your books? Oh, gosh. Oh, other than this is the funniest one going, you didn't tell me my husband had to be home when I finished it. <laughs> <laughs> See, and this is why it's a good present for Valentine's Day. Yeah, it was so funny. The first time one of my friends read it going, holy shit, you could have told me that you knew he was away. Why the hell bloody did you tell me to read it? I, was like, I didn't know he was away and then you didn't tell me. Uh, so, I have to wait another two weeks. Yeah, <laughs> so um, <clears throat> that was probably the funniest one, I reckon. The ones when I get, you didn't tell me my husband had to be home when yeah. I finished reading it. <laughs> Melissa Craig bringing people together. Yeah. That's exactly right. And that's, that's why this is a Valentine's edition of Newbie Riders, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Was that intentional? No, but it, it did work out. So It did. It did work out. And, and it's a great Valentine's present. Why not read it? And read it together. That's what I get a lot of couples saying, that they read it together. And they oh. laugh. But, um, <laughs> and, you know, why not? That's what it's all about. You should do an audio version of your book. I have tried, and I um, and for, I have done an audio of um, one of my books, Nothing Innocent. But at the moment, because I live in Australia, America won't allow Australian audio people unless you've got an American um, address and things like that. So because I'm Australian, hmm. oh, that's a bit much. That's crap. They they haven't allowed it yet, so only Americans can do 
audio books unless you have a proper, unless you live in America and. But that's silly. Mm-hmm. Audible won't allow it at the moment, so. Why? What, what is the I think, basis? I think, I think because they pay everyone, you know, it's the paying. Mm. Um, because they pay everyone via direct debit over there, whereas they would have to do via check like Amazon do. Oh, but guess what? Why doesn't, why doesn't anyone use PayPal? I know. It's actually ridiculous how people don't use PayPal. Smashwords does. Yeah, that's, and that's great. I love it's that. A, it's no skin off their nose to do PayPal. I don't understand why they don't well, do it. Well, it is because PayPal charges you for it. They take a percentage. Because mm. I looked mm. into it for my business and they do. Yeah. They take a percentage. It's a scale, sliding well, scale. Well, they do. They do and Booktastic uses PayPal. Mm. But yeah. to be honest, though, it is such a negligible amount. I mean, it's, it's like 1% for this price bracket to that price bracket, well, whatever. Small, and, and guess what? If someone pays you in a retail shop with a credit card, they take 2 or 3%. Correct. Yeah. So, so there's no difference, really. And, and I'd rather, you know, you'd rather be able to get something. I'd rather be able to get my books into audiobooks and... Mm -hmm. And be a, I wouldn't care if it was only a check every three months like it is in royalties with Amazon. Um, but, yes, I did a big hoo-ha over the whole thing because I recorded the whole book, did it all, everything they wanted, submitted it, and then they went, oh, sorry, you're, hmm. you have an Australian address. That's, That's a bit strange because I contacted Audible. I was looking at and still when I get some time, I want to set this up. Mm -hmm. Audible have a thing for podcasters where... You can, I can say to people, hey, go to audible.com, type in this code yes. or this thing, and you'll get a free audio book, yes. that sort of stuff. And so we could set things up where if we've got a guest that happens to have it, like say, for example, if you had yours up there yep. as an audio book, you could say, hey, look, Melissa's on, go to this, yep. you'll get it for free, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I noticed that on the sign-up form, it asked for an American address, so I yep. emailed them. and yep. said, that's a bit hard. I, I interview people from all around the world, including Americans. Mm. What can I do? I think she and they even ask for the. Uh, they don't call it an ABN, which is the Australian business. No. Number. They call it um, EIN. Yeah, and it asked for that, and I said, "Well, I don't have one of them. I'm not a mm. company registered overseas." So this person did get back to me and say, "Look, you should be fine if you just put that stuff in, and then let us know that mm. we're going to look at it." But yeah. you shouldn't have to go through that rigmarole. Oh, I had emails and, and phone calls. I literally rang them up even and I was on the phone for like half an hour, just blah, blah, blah. But anyway. <laughs> Don't you know who I am? That's what she know who I am. Just a point for the newbie writers. With mm. an EIN, if you're an author in Australia or New Zealand, yes. um, the Americans, when they go to pay you, so if, if you've released your book and you get a cheque from Amazon, um, they will take out 30% tax unless yes. you get an EIN, which is an American tax file number for a sole trader. So when you get that, they only take out 5% because they have an agreement with Australia. And to get that, you just look up the IRS phone number in America and you ring them up and they will give it to you over the phone. And if you get someone who doesn't do that, just ring back because mm. someone will eventually give it to you. Well, Emma and, in the chat room yeah. said, can you just get a US PO box and redirect it to Australia? No, um, no, it's, it's no. about the bank account and you cannot open a bank account unless you live in America. Yeah, because when I was in America, I did try and do that because um, we went to a post office, didn't we, Dion? And yeah. um, <clears throat> and no, I can't do that. <laughs> I tried, I tried. So, um, Bribe yes. them with one of your books. <laughs> I tried. No, you have to move to America, Melissa. It's simple. Simple, simple. 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 But, um, Exactly what Dion said. You want to make sure you don't get that thirty percent because in my first royalty check, and seriously, when you get, you know, a few thousand dollars worth of book sell, and you get thirty, <laughs> like, and they say you can get it back, but you have to apply for it with the U.S. government to get it back. So, and then that takes, the and it is a pain in the bottom, and I still have to do it, and. Yeah, you put it off and put it off and then it never happens. Yeah, and um, and 5% is so much different. So make sure you go get your EIN. So is that for Amazon.com? That's for any American any, outlet. So Smashwords even Smashwords. Is the same. But Smashwords is good because they hold on to your money until you provide that information. So it took me a year to get it to them. So mm. I got a nice lump sum in my... PayPal account when it finally went across. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's good and that's how it should, but Amazon don't. Amazon will take the 30% out until you actually provide them with it. So when you first put your book out, the first thing you want to do 
is get this EIN. Well, before you put your book out. Well, before out. you even put your book out, but if you don't realise it all afterwards, yeah, and get it going straight away. Well, and a lot of people wouldn't. You, would they'll they? give you the EIN over the phone, but they'll also send you a copy of the paperwork. So, um, yeah, if you try to do it the way they tell you you should do it, it's like six weeks and you have to mail it out and do all this other crap and provide yep. documentation of this, that and the other. Just ignore that. Just And don't ask for an ITIN. There's that as well. You just want the yep. EIN. The only time you'll need an ITIN is if you have an overseas publisher. Yep. So if you didn't self-publish, if your publisher is from America, you'll they need have, one. Yep. And, and seriously, guys, I know you're probably going, oh, but it says to do it. I went through the process that Dion's talking about. I had to submit all these papers. You had to get JPs and all this other stuff. And it was three months before I even heard back from them. And then they say, oh, no, sorry, you have to resubmit. <laughs> so... And then Melissa spoke to me and I'm like, you can do it on the phone. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. So um, that is a great hint, guys. <laughs> and I only found out by accident because I was about to do all this paperwork for the ITIN and I went, hang on a minute, I'm a sole trader really technically. I'm just a person you know, mm. selling books. Why don't I ring up and find out? So I rang up just to find out if I could do the EIN instead because that was simpler in terms of paperwork. You still had to mail everything off. And they said, oh, yeah, we can do it now on the phone. And I thought, I'm so glad I ran <laughs> up. So there you go. Do you have to do then a tax return, an American tax return? No, 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 no. no, no. They, they automatically take it out. But when you do do your tax here, you do have to submit that you did. Well, it's overseas income. income. Yeah. You put it in your overseas income section. So we're putting all these newbies off going, oh, I just wrote my book and put it on Amazon. You yeah, people. but if, if they're not like, marketing and if they're not doing it properly, they're not going to sell any anyway. Yeah. And, and Amazon won't pay because we're overseas. They will until not pay until you've, had until you've got $100 in your account. And, and, and that's not just in total on all Amazons. That's in every different country. So you'd have to make $100 worth in the UK before the, you get the UK amount. You get $100 in the America or Italy or, or wherever. You have to make $100 in each different country before they send you the royalty. Hmm. I guess if you've got the domination on that market, you can do whatever you like. Mm. That yes, sucks. they can. Yeah, so that's just some information for authors. So if you're thinking of self-publishing and you actually want to sell books, you have to work hard to do it. Don't just expect people to rush in and buy your book because they won't. Mm. Yes. Unless you're telling people about it, unless you're on social media and unless you've done it properly in terms of covers and editing and all the yeah. rest of it. Unless you've yeah. been on this show. Yeah, what was that? You know. <laughs> well, I wasn't on the show, and I got you know pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I literally, I think if you go into writing, and you, I had the whole vision of I'd be happy if I sold three books a year. That that's serious. No, no, seriously, I went in going, no one's going to ever buy my crap. You know, oh, no, that's so funny. It, no, I had the whole envision. No one's going to ever buy my books, and I'm happy with that. I'm happy if I got three readers that absolutely loved it. And connected with the book. That's so, so cute. Ha, ha, ha. I've and, always and wanted to sell millions ever since I was about <laughs> no, 15. I've wanted to be a best-selling author. I don't want to sell three books. I want to sell a million books. I, I think <laughs> Disappointment whole... incoming. <laughs> what was that? Well, I, was, I was disappointment incoming. Oh. So, um, you know, I think I just had the whole idea. I had to get it out of my head. And, and that was the whole thing I wrote. And I wrote for me and me alone. Mm. And I think that was my whole, and I, I don't know, and then, you know, it became number 32 as a paperback for international bestseller in erotica after two weeks for the paperback. Wow. So, that's um, crazy. And that was like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> that's awesome. No one only was going to sell three books. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so if you go into that mentality, don't think you're going to just get out there and make millions straight away. It is hard work. And you do have to do it, and social media is the perfect way. No matter what, no what, no matter what genre you are, um, you know there are a lot of books. There's over three million books on Amazon, on Kindle, and <laughs> trying to make it to the top hundred. Three million. Mm-hmm. Three. It was um, yeah on the Kindle version. I saw it the other day. Wow. <clears throat> well, there you go, Dion. You've got a lot of work to do. Well, I'm not doing too bad then, because I'm always yeah. in. Yeah, I'm always in the, uh, the top fifty thousand. Yeah, which is which good. isn't too bad. Hmm. Yeah, 
So, cool. that's well. you, and that's what you have to think. You know, out of all the books in the whole world, Dion, that's where you rank. So that is pretty awesome. And that's yeah, what you have to think. Days. Top one hundred no. would be better. I know, I know, but... <laughs> she's never she's, happy. She's not happy. I'm, I'm happy, happy, but I could be happier. <laughs> oh, we all could be happier. But, you know, you have to look at the big scheme of things. There's so many genres in this world. So mm. be thankful that you there already. So, well, anyway. we should move on. We've got a few things to do, but um, have you got any quick tip for newbies? I think uh, making sure that you get your website out first before you publish your book. Make sure you've got your website sorted because once you get that book out, you're not going to have time to do that. <laughs> I, I know, um, I remember when I put my first book out, you don't realise how many people, how much time it takes up once that book is out and people start asking you questions or um, you start getting that pressure of reviews or people want to interview you and things like that and um, you don't have time for the little things. So make sure before you press that publish button that you get an editor. Mm. <laughs> make sure yep. make sure that you edit your book because see when I first published Pentacle Package I did not think that it was going to be sell so I didn't worry about getting it edited properly I um, just used better readers and things like that and I wish I didn't so um, get an editor straight away don't even put it out unless you use the editor well there you go and yeah. where can people find all your books and where, where can we find yourself out there on the yeah. internet yeah, I'm on Twitter, on Melissa K. Craig on Twitter. Um, I've got my website is www.melissacraigauthor.wordpress.com. Um, you can find my books on Amazon, iTunes, Smashwords, all online bookstores. Sydney have a, a some of the biggest, a uh, lot of bookstores in Sydney and that are stocking it. Dimmix, um, Angus and Robinson. Um, yeah, so, um, or you can just order online. Book cool. Depository. Book Depository is great because it's got free delivery worldwide. See, when I hear that place, I, for some reason my brain goes to Book Suppository. Depository, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm just> saying, <laughs> <I know. laughs> These books will give you the shit. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's well, good because they have free worldwide delivery for paperbacks. Well, there you go. Well, the suppository goes in the depository. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Oh, gosh. All right. And who's the writer here? Gosh. <laughs> No, they're just similar words. It's like affluent and effluent are very similar. <laughs> well, let's just take it down a notch. Hey, look, we've got a couple of the stock standard things to do, like a prompt. Now, Catherine supplied this prompt. I don't know. I don't get into the whole Olympic thing. I'm sure Mel does with the Sex Olympics or something. But this one is, what really should be an Olympic sport? Uh -huh, here we go. 300-yard dash burdened by a three-year-old, flat soccer ball, full diaper bag and skis. No, 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 we don't want to do that. Write about either the Olympic sport you could win or create a bizarre sport that could be entertaining to watch. <laughs> well, that's very easy to answer, especially based on what we're talking about today. So, yeah. What would be an Olympic sport that you'd want to see? Mm, we're talking about winter, obviously, at the moment. No, it can be summer. It doesn't matter because we're in summer. Oh, I like watching a lot of, oh, gosh, kite surfing should be on it. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. No, no. Dion, what about you? Dion? It'd be something to do with toes, wouldn't it? No, yuck. Yeah. Well, mine's not very creative. I'd like to. <laughs> it's, it's in the sailing category, moth sailing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> see, yours is sailing, one's kite surfing. Only so. because my husband does it and he's good at it and he could get on the Olympics. <laughs> He no. probably wouldn't because he's too old. But kite surfing should be on it because it's absolutely. You, if you ever see a race, it's awesome. Do they actually race them? Yeah, you can do races. Yeah, really. We do a lot up here. Wow. So yeah. I would like to see more of a back to nature event, okay. where and you can do it for the running and you can do it for the swimming. So when they dive in, they also then release a shark in each lane. Oh, great! Or they release a pack of tigers. And the, oh, not very nice. So they have okay. to run. Yeah, how quickly would marathons get done? We don't need to see them jogging for five hours. Yeah, yeah, we don't need to see blood and guts all over the place Isn't either. Isn't that more Hunger Games rather than um, Olympic, Olympic Games? Yeah. <laughs> well, you could have officials to stop them actually being eaten, but just that thought of go and then, oh, there's a tiger on my heels. Motivation. 
Motivation. That's right. So there you <clears> go. <throat> anyway. You can race in that one. I, you know I, what? They, they could do the 100 metres sprint with high heels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I won't be a part of that one. <laughs> that oh, would be funny. Uh, should we do a tortured sentence? Yes. Next time, don't put the Roman farces on the rocket slab. <laughs> Tortured sentences. That's Mel's next book. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to think of a name then that goes with torture. So was I. Yeah, laugh. so, yeah. <laughs> that's why I laughed. <laughs> Total torture. Mm. All right, so then uh, Catherine sent this one in as a student commenting on a modest proposal. So one way he makes his argument unserious is when he starts to become insincere. Right, unserious. Un Should be word of the week. <laughs> unserious. Hmm. Serious. I'd like to um, read out something, though, that I found uh, online. <laughs> it was on Google+. Plus. Fake or not, I don't really care. It's well written, so it's not really a tortured sentence. But this is a picture of an advert in a paper from somewhere. You've probably seen it. And it says, I'm quite sure most of you have seen the rather large green dragon that has been flying over northeast Oklahoma for the better part of a week. I'm looking for someone to lure said dragon away from the Oklahoma area to a more rural area, force said dragon to land in rural area, slay said dragon in whatever way you see fit. No pay, dragon slaying is its own reward. Please note that I'm not talking about the red dragon that frequents the area from time to time. He and I have an agreement. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> I thought, what a great ad. If you got that call from someone, that you're in that sort of ads <laughs> department, and I guess I'd like to put a classified in thanks in the plumbing section, and they read that out, I would have no hesitation going, you get a free ad. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Anyway. So, word of the week. From Arlene Miller, her bigwords101.com. Uh, this one is Iconomania. Obsession with icons. Stay away from that computer desktop. Yeah, I was going to say, what sort of icons? People yeah. want to the ones on the computer. <laughs> yeah, well, no, if you've got... If, if you're a, mania, a maniac about icons like famous people, then that's actually stalking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's obsessed with icons? I can't stand them. No, I'm I not. I don't, I don't have a lot of them on my phone, so it's all good. <laughs> yeah, but even on my desktop, just shit everywhere. Anyway. When I have a laptop, I always use my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do stuff on my phone. I always type the wrong thing and make mistakes. I much prefer my laptop. Yeah, I don't really like laptop either. I just hate everything. No, that's... <laughs> you wouldn't be Damien if you didn't hate everything. I know. It's good. Keeps you the world level. Us, no, not at all. No, see? Yeah. Now. Oh, I've got a big, big huff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> huff and I puff and... Anyway, is there anyone you want to give a shout out to, Melissa? Ah, oh, goodness me. It has to be Dion. No, that I does not count. Know, I know, but she's awesome. So, um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, well, this week um, on social media has been good because I've had some interest with UK radio stations over there, so I suppose I should uh, give a shout-out shout to because they mentioned me. There's been a few over there in the UK the last few weeks that have mentioned me over there, so... Um, I'm very, very grateful, mm. which, which is nice. So, um, oh, my goodness. So I should have been prepared, shouldn't no, I? No, that's the whole point of this little bit is I lump oh. it on people. Yeah, just me. Well, if you are on UK radio, don't forget to say, give a shout-out to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about this million books. Yeah. Well, uh, I've had some. It was on um, 94.4 FM in um, Salford City Radio, and also I had it on, I think it was, I want to get it right, because imagine if I said it wrong. The BBC. Yeah. No, it was on 101.5 FM, so in um, Radio Plus, 
Yeah, in I think it's Coventry or something. Mm. So um, yeah, and then there was one in London, which was great as well. Ooh, so, yeah, London. That's pretty London. So they just gave mentions. Yeah, so they caught up with me on social media, and let's fingers crossed. So, mm. so did mm-hmm. you actually get to listen to it? Or did they send you a I did, screen? I did. I, I, I listened to, to one of them and then the other two I was asleep. So <laughs> <laughs> I was because you know the time difference. So it was a bit hard. Was that surreal though? To be sort of listening in here. So we got um, Mel Craig here. She's uh <laughs> she's got a bit of a plentiful package going on. Yeah. And I just like to say I read your book and that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> Or if it was more formal, you know. So today on the BBC, we are being talking about penis. Um, <laughs> no, what does mm. Dion call it? Oh, gosh. Peen. 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 Would you like to find out the difference between peen and penis? Stay tuned for Melissa Craig in her book, Plentiful Package. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. It, is, it is very surreal when you hear it like that and when mm. people do mention you. And, and even when you are doing a radio interview on, you know, Triple M or, or 2GB and stuff like that and they're interviewing you, like even um, Luke Grant from uh, 2GB the other day goes, hope to catch up soon, we'll have to do another talk. So, yay! Cool. Um, lucky. Yeah, so I was just like, oh, cool, that's awesome. <laughs> isn't, isn't Steve Price, is that his name, on 2GB? Isn't he the angry one? He's always on the project as the cranky old man. Steve Price. I think he's my dad. Uh, uh, <laughs> he's always angry. He's your dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Anyway. No. Dion, no. thanks for co-hosting. Is there anyone you want to give a shout-out to? And don't um, say Mel Craig or I'm going to end this show right now. <laughs> um, Mel. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do I want to give a shout out to anyone? No. Mm, not really. <laughs> Except for me. Because I get to see her soon. So yay. Yay, yes, we're catching up. We're both doing the author signing. So if there's any Australians yes. listening to this podcast and uh, you are up in the Gold Coast area on the twenty second of March, you can attend the indie authors what's it called? Indie um not indie Indie, Vengeance. indie Authors Down Under. Yeah, in, <laughs> so it, and actually there's three three or four overseas authors coming um, to attend and sign books as well. So we're going to be there, I'll be there with my fantasy books and my Doris and Gemma humour um, romance book mm-hmm. and Melissa will be there with her erotica, erotic, erotic. Yes, erotic. Oh. And <laughs> also we're, it's pretty cool because we're part of the VIP package and um, readers get to have dinner with us. Yeah. So, lucky you can pay to have dinner with us. You can pay awesome. to have dinner. We would have gone to dinner with you anyway, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. That's yeah, funny. so that's one in March. So you can get online, and there is a website for that event. It's um, yep. the Indie Authors Down Under, and yep. just get on there and buy some tickets. And yep. uh, we would love to see you there. Yeah, cool. it's at the Outrigger. So oh. um, on the twenty second of March, between ten and four. The Outrigger. Uh, Anything, hotel. anything yes. can be sexually orientated, can't it? Yeah, the outrigger. Hmm. <laughs> he grabbed his know, outrigger. That sound sexual to me, Damien. Oh, look, I can make anything sound sexual if I put my mind to it. Um, <laughs> I'd like to give a shout-out to Emma in our chat room. Thanks for being in. That was cool. And very quickly, Dion, come on. Spruik Booktastic. Oh, okay. Well, yes, Booktastic authors, um, if you've got books, that you would like to advertise, please get in touch with us. And readers, you can sign up to receive good book deals or just go and visit the site and check out what the deals of the day are. And we are www.booktastic with a K on the end, dot com. We would love to see you there. And is there any pick of the day today? Pick of the day today, uh, we have a free book. Oh, you just dumped this on me now, so now I've got to so hurry up and go to the website. Dump, 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 dump. Um, and, and also, we do we have actually our interview of the week was with an Australian author who writes um, outback romances, and she's and great. Harrison, and yeah. she's awesome. So you can visit our blog and have a look at that um, interview. Um, book of the day, I would say, if you're into free books, uh, mine for tonight, which is a best-selling um, e-book, the Billionaire's Obsession book one. So it's it's a romance erotica. I would say that's our free book of the day, um, and our thriller book of the day is Kingdom by a very talented author and that's been reduced 
to ninety nine cents mm -hmm. from three ninety nine. So that's a pretty good deal. Cool. So there are a couple of our deals of the day. There you go, booktastic.com. All right, well, thanks, Mel, for coming on. It's been a lot thanks of fun. Thanks for having me. I'm going to have to yeah. have you on again. <laughs> yes, this time I'll, I'll have to be serious. <laughs> no, <laughs> oh, well, yes. Yeah. Shout out to uh, Melissa Craig. <laughs> You're terrible, Muriel. <laughs> hey, hey, it's, it's called supporting each other. It is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for being on. And, until oh, and I'd also week. like to say hi, Emma, in the chat room. Thanks, Emma. Until next week. See you then. Okay. Bye. Bye. Just when you thought it was safe to be productive, this is the Newbie Writers Podcast.